Hi, my name is Steve Rahi. I am a Premier Field Engineer specializing in System Center Technologies. Today's discussion will be Part 17 of an ongoing series talking about Operating System Deployment in Configuration Manager 2012. Today's discussion will center on boot images. So the title, OSD and Custom Boot Images, Process and Strategy. Really, we're just going to talk about boot images. There will be a bit of discussion about custom boot images as well, but, but just exploring kind of what a boot image is and, and building out. Here's the agenda. So detailing you know, boot image uh, construction, how it works, exploring the boot image, uh, boot, boot images, boot media, customization, on we go. Uh, here's, here's where we're going to go, the path we're going to go down. So let's start. So what is a boot image? We've talked about it before in other installments in this series, but specifically a boot image is Windows PE. That's really all it is. Uh, it's, it's Windows PE base with customizations added specific to Configuration Manager. So if you recall the session we did on the ADK, uh, I showed you how you could leverage, uh, create, or you could create and then leverage just the base build of Windows PE to interact with the environment, ultimately to install an image, whatever, right? These things can be done manually. We talked about that again at the beginning of this series. Really, OSD is a wrapper uh, around uh, imaging that makes imaging easier, makes imaging more robust. You can do a lot of these things manually. Windows PE uh, is something you can use to manually achieve the results of deploying an image and so on. We customize it in OSD to allow that Windows PE environment to be able to access the OSD infrastructure and deploy images from that OSD infrastructure, right? But at the base, the Config Manager boot image is just Windows PE customized. Windows PE, very important to the imaging process, very key, used in all types of imaging, bare metal, uh, re-image. Uh, the very first phase of imaging, really, except in re-image, is to get into Windows PE. In a re-image scenario, uh, the very first part there might be to do some work in the existing OS, capture user state, whatever, but then immediately we reboot into uh, Windows PE because in Windows PE, we have uh, an OS running in RAM. We're not relying on the hard disk. The hard disk is not locked. It makes it available for uh, partitioning, for formatting, for uh, injecting different material, whatever it is, uh, full access to the hard drive, right? Many things happen, can happen in the phase Windows PE when the boot image is running, uh, certainly required for the OS deployment phase. Uh, you can inject changes to the OS while you're in the Windows PE phase so that those changes are there before the system ever boots up. Again, kind of going through some summary things that we've seen, you know, certainly adding drivers. Uh, in some cases, you could do software updates if you choose the right options. number of things that are important in the Windows PE phase, right? So when, again, Windows PE, boot image, kind of interchangeable. Um, boot image is more than Windows PE, but at the core, it is Windows PE, uh, as we'll see. All right, so that said, let's actually look at the Windows PE, the, I'm sorry, the boot image um, source directory, an example boot image uh, source directory. So uh, detailed here on the screen, there's actually three files. There's the boot.wim. This is the raw Windows PE directly from the ADK. It is not customized for Config Manager. Then we have the bootwim.old, which is the previous version of Windows PE that we keep just as a backup. And then finally, you'll see boot.packageid.wim. This is the version of Windows PE that we use during imaging. We add very, you know, uh, very specific things to this particular boot image so that are, are specific to Config Manager, like variables, uh, MP settings, uh, configurations of, of site versus dynamic uh, mode for looking up MPs, and so on. Best way to really see this is to see it. So let me pull in the environment for a minute. And if we look under Operating System Deployment and look at boot images, if we look at the properties here and look at the source directory path, so data source, here's the path. And it's interesting here because if you look at this path, we refer to boot.wim. But if you actually go to this path and review it, you see that indeed it is boot.wim. But look at the 
look at the dates. Uh, last time we accessed this was today. I was doing some work earlier. Uh, what you'll see as I kind of go through this is this is the starting point. This is not what we use actually during imaging. This is the base Windows PE, so I'll show that to you in a minute. This again is historical. You see it's back from 2013. And then this is the one that we actually leverage in Windows PE. It's a little bit bigger. Uh, it contains additional information. So you'll see in this case it's actually a lot bigger than the base WIM because we have several things inside of it. Right? So we'll explore these uh, in a minute. So while I'm in here in the boot image properties, there's a number of customizations I can make here. Uh, I could say uh, that I want to use command prompt support. I want to specify a pre-start command, background images. I have optional components here that I've added, PowerShell.net and so on. I could add more. The point is, whenever you make changes in this interface, it actually recompiles, if you will, the boot whim to add those changes, right? Um, there are some changes that you can't make from the GUI. Uh, you could uh, and inject those manually into the WIM and so on, right, using the Windows PE, I'm sorry, the uh, ADK commands. So let's actually uh, do that for a minute. Before we get there, I'll pull that back out for a second. So the, the boot image GUI actually triggers the, uh, the update to the boot.packageid.wim. Uh, we inject those changes automatically behind the scenes. Again, we're automating what you could do manually by uh, by running DISM. So uh, that's a question that you might have in your mind. If you need to customize the boot whim to add files to it, to add packages to it, to uh, do whatever you want to it, do you have to use the DISM tool, which I'm going to show you in a minute, to actually unpack that whim, make the changes, and then save it back off? The answer is no, you don't have to. Uh, you could, in some cases, use uh, just simply DISM to add the package on the fly, right? It really is understanding the tools, what they can do, and choosing the best option. So I'm going to show you here just the process of mounting the WIM files, exploring the WIM files a little bit. The real purpose of this demo is to show you exactly how we leverage these boot WIMs and so on. So what I'm going to do is pull the environment back in, and I'm going to go and do a command prompt. A little bit of typing here. So uh, what I want to do, I have a couple of directories where I can mount some images. I want to show them uh, to you side by side. So I'm going to use DISM to mount my, uh, my first boot whim. Pardon the typing here. So this is the path to the uh, boot whim, that was the source directory inside the properties of the x64 boot whim. I'm going to choose that I want index 1 for this image. And the mount dir is going to be c colon backslash mount. And then it'll go out and mount that directory. All right. So um, then I want to take the specific one that has the package ID in and I want to mount that. So uh, as soon as we're done here, I'll do that. Okay. So the only change here really is I want CAS0005, uh, one more zero, dot WIM, and then I want uh, to change the directory here to uh, mount updated WIM. Uh, updated, that would help, okay. So, so mounting that. Now, what I've done is I've just put these two where I can look at them side by side. So I want to first start with mount, and then I want to compare it side by side with the other one. So mount updated. So if I pull these over here side by side, you'll notice pretty immediately that just in the directory structure, there is one addition, right? On the left, we have five folders. On the right, we have six. And so if we explore these, though, you'll see some differences. So on the left, we'll just start at program files. Look at it. Not a, not a lot in here, just common files and so on. But if you look on the right, remember, this is the, the specific... Uh, modified uh, boot whim with the CAS0005 in it, inside here you saw in the uh, properties of the boot whim that I had added Windows PowerShell. Well, here you see uh, structure for Windows PowerShell added to the Config Manager customized version of the boot whim. Here under Program Files x86, we see that we have .NET, 
right? Added, you saw that I added that in the GUI. Uh, if we look under um, these other folders, we're not going to see a lot, but you notice the uh, SMS here, SMS folder. So I don't have it over here. I do have it over here because we're specifically customizing this BootWim for use in the Config Manager environment to hook into the Config Manager environment. We need binaries to be able to do that. So for example, if I look at my x86 folder, uh, you'll see different files in here that are interesting. CM Trace is embedded uh, in the boot whim whenever we customize it. We have a number of OSD uh, executables, some DLLs, different things that work with different steps. Here's the setup hook uh, and, and such that we need. We have some INIs, the boot shell, uh, .ini, and, uh, and so on, right? Okay, so that's just showing side by side. Now, so let me actually get rid of these and unmount them. Um, okay, so to unmount those, it's just going to be, again, dism. So unmount whim this time, and then mount dir, colon, c colon, backslash mount, and here, discard. So let me pause here for a minute. So I mentioned before I started mounting these whims that if you need to modify the whim, you have really three choices. One is use the GUI, right? Question came up at one point. If I need, uh, if, a, if an individual, if a customer needs to modify the uh, boot image and include some optional components such as here, uh, should that be done in the GUI? Would it be better to do it uh, on the command line or what? And the answer is really there's there's really nothing you can customize in the GUI that you could not also customize on the command line. However, using the command line requires extra typing, it's easier to make a mistake, and so on. So where you can let the GUI actually inject the changes for you, that's what I would prefer, right? But you can certainly, uh, as an option, use the GUI. You can also, as an option, mount the WIM, like you saw me do, uh, input files into that WIM, and then save those files off. So here, uh, what reminded me to say that again is this discard. There are two options here. One is discard and the other is a switch to preserve. I forget right now off the top of my head what that switch name is, but there's another option here to preserve the settings and write those actually into the whim when we unmount it, right? That's a second option. The third is using DISM, you can use switches like add package or uh, add drivers or whatever to let DISM inject those components into the whim on the fly. It doesn't require you mounting it and so on. It just opens the whim up, adds those files, and then closes the whim back down in one operation, right? So there are three options. Uh, in order of preference, I would choose the GUI, I would choose DISM to add known packages, and then I would actually mount the whim and make the changes manually, right? That's just my preference. All right, so let's go ahead and discard those changes. I don't care to keep them. Uh, what did I do? Uh, Oops, there, that's probably it, yeah. So I'm gonna get rid of that one and then I want to get rid of the other one as well and then we'll move on. Okay, so let me get rid of this one as well. Okay, cool. All right, so that's the default boot whim, then the customized boot whim that OSD customizes, and I want to go one extra level. So I want to look specifically at the uh, boot media. So boot media is not really a, a, a boot image per se, but if you create task sequence media, if you will, you have an option to create a couple of different kinds of bootable media. Standalone media, bootable media, capture media, pre-stage media, whatever. Any one of these, if you go through it, a while, you know, several steps in, we're going to be asked which boot image do we want to use. We're asking which boot image because we need to know which boot whim we need to stage in preparation for accessing the config manager environment. What we do is we take that boot.cas005, in my case, dot whim, and we wrap it inside of a bootable, uh, in the case I'm going to show you, ISO file, right? Could be USB, whatever, but we're going to take that boot media and wrap it in something that is a delivery system essentially for the machine, right? So let's look at it. So if I take uh, my boot media that I've created, and I've actually got it here, 
cre uh, created this before we got started. So here's my bootmedia.iso. I just want to mount this so that I can access it. So this is just a boot CD. It has some customizations for Config Manager. It has the boot whim, which this is interesting because the name of this is boot.wim, but it's not the same file as the boot.wim we saw on the hard drive, right? Because boot.wim on the hard drive is not customized for Config Manager. Rather, this one is the boot.wim package id.wim file it's just we name it boot.wim here right and so you can uh, confirm that because you look at the file size and you see that that matches the actual boot.package id.wim file okay so what i want to do is i want to copy this out i've actually uh, just going to copy it here to the root of the c drive copy it oops i must have already done it okay replace it whatever that's fine and now what I want to do is just go back through this process and mount this one, right? Just as a, a point of showing that this actually is the uh, uh, boot.cas0005.wim instead. All right, so we're going to mount that out. Okay, mount updated WIM. Let's go in there. Almost done, but uh, just in a second, you'll uh, see. You know what? I wasn't seeing uh, the right thing here, and I realized I made a mistake here, so let me go correct that. Uh, first here, I'm going to unmount there. So what I did is notice the path that I used. I just referred back to the original boot.wim. I don't want to do that. I meant to do it at the root of the C drive, which is where I copied the boot.wim. So no big surprise the first time I didn't actually see what I expected over here in the window, but I will uh, next time I do this. So, all right, let's, uh, let's run through this again real quick and mount it. Okay, so I'm going to mount WIM here. I'm going to respecify. And shorten the path to the root of the C drive. That's what I want to do. Now, uh, what do I do? File. All right, I messed up. I can't use that path. It must still have a lock on it. Let me put it just in mount. Boom. All right, there we go. So after all that, so now I finally have the um, boot whim, which is actually the boot.packageid.wim from the boot media, say that three times fast, mounted into the mount folder, right? And all that work just to show you that this is the exact same whim that I showed you earlier. So looking in here, we see the uh, uh, same file, CM trace. Uh, all these different things, right? So that's that's really the point of this. So let me unmount that now. Unmount whim. All right, and we'll let that do its job. Good enough. All right, now all that to, to show that once we get into the boot media, we still have the same whim. So what is the job of the boot media? The, the boot media or task sequence media the whole job is to boot the machine and create the environment that we need in order to access the config manager infrastructure. So you see here that under sources, we have the boot whim. So when we boot the machine, we're going to expand that boot whim onto the X drive. The X drive is a RAM disk, right? The other components here uh, of the boot media are things that we need in order to know how to do our job, right? You'll see some of the same files and different things here, but this is basically uh, instructing how we're going to expand the uh, the boot whim and so on onto the X drive. In, in fact, to say it another way, once we boot from boot media and once PE is running, you can take out boot media, it's not going to hurt anything, uh, because we're now running totally off of that whim that we created, and uh, it's in memory, right? So let's, let's actually do that 
real quick. So I'm going to take uh, this machine that I have the boot ISO mounted to. So if I look at settings, uh, here's my bootmedia.iso. That's what's going to boot. I'm going to start this up. All right, I'm going to choose to boot from the DVD. I'm not going to let this go very far, just far enough to load PE and then show you. Launching, launching. So in my case, I'm just going to hit F8 as soon as I can. There we go. And you'll see I'm already on the X drive, right? So if I do a backslash here and do a directory, you'll see that the structure here is identical to, in fact, I don't, even, I don't even need this. The structure here is identical to what I had on my whim. If I go into the SMS directory, you'll see that I have um, the same structure and so on. The DVD uh, is on the E drive, right? So this is what you'd expect, what I showed you when I expanded the ISO, and so on. And just to prove the point, I can go in here and go to File Settings and take away the DVD drive to None. Hit OK. All right. And applying the changes. And what you see, uh, I've moved from the extra, uh, E drive to the X drive. Try to go back to E. It's not there. X, fine. So I'm just going to, uh, I can continue on whatever, and it's unaffected. So no big deal about getting, getting rid of that. So I close the command prompt, and that will cause this thing to reboot because I uh, said exit, so I'm good. So I'll go ahead and leave that. Right? All right, so pull the environment out again. So I kind of jumped ahead a little bit talking about the boot image and the boot media just to go through it again. So the boot whim does equal win PE. They are the same. Those two terms kind of are interchangeable. The boot whim is simply win PE modified. The boot.packageid.wim is Windows PE plus the injected content specific to configuration manager. Boot media then is the boot.packageid.wim wrapped up in an ISO. The boot.wim file that's there is not the same name, but it's the same content, right? And then xDrive, just like you saw, it's created by booting from the boot media. The binaries on the boot media know how to create that xDrive, know how to expand the WIM onto that xDrive, and then the contents of the xDrive are exactly the contents of the boot.packageid.wim uh, loaded into RAM here, and then that whole boot media thing just showing it to you and so on, how the structure of that works. Right. All right. So why would we customize boot images? What's the point, right? We have the default boot images. Why would we want to customize uh, the, boot, uh, the boot images? So a couple of reasons. Here's a few examples. So one thing you might want to do is increase the verbosity of the task sequence log. If you want to do that, then one of the ways that you would have to do it is to tweak the boot image. There's some files in there, some additions you'll make. I'll show you how to do that in an upcoming session when we talk about troubleshooting. But that's one reason. And, uh, and, and you would want to do that uh, directly through editing the boot image and so on. Add custom content to the boot process. So if you want to add in information to the whim, you know, whatever, that's fine. If you want to modify your configuration files, you know, an example, in 2007, you had to edit one of the INI files to set up a, a hook, a pre-start hook, uh, to, uh, to to let it run, run that pre-start command during uh, launch of the uh, of the boot image, and so on. Integrated in 2012, there's other reasons too, right? But these are a few that you might be interested. Uh, on the task sequence log verbosity, I'll just go on a tangent here and say, you know, we have in many places in Config Manager the ability to increase logging. You can set verbose and debug logging on the client components and so on. You can do the same with task sequence logging. The normal level of logging is generally fine, but if you need to increase it, and you might want to uh, see even more detail, then uh, there's a process you have to go through. The boot image is actually one place. There are others, uh, and again, I'll show that to you as we go along. 
So if you do need to customize the boot image, the question is how do we do it, right? There's a couple of thoughts here. One, do you want to take the default boot image and modify it, meaning if I go over here to boot images, do I want to actually modify these base boot images? The answer is maybe for some things, right? Or instead of that, do I want to create completely custom boot images and leave these alone, right? Or do I want to do both? And again, the answer is up to your preference. You can do whatever. My mind is always around if we have something default that the system provides and we need to make changes to it, let's just make a copy of those default items and then build on top or whatever the equivalent is in the area of config manager we're talking about. So in my case, I would really prefer not to modify the default boot whims at all. right? Uh, you see in my case there's uh, the command switch and a couple of components are added to it. So uh, even as I say that in my lab, I'm not living by that. But in production for sure, I prefer to leave the default boot whims alone and then add customization in a truly custom boot image. And maybe not even use your default boot images in the environment. Maybe they're just there as a starting point, right? So how do you go about actually, if you want to create a custom boot image, how do you add a custom boot image? Well, there's a couple of ways. One, you can uh, go to the ADK directly. You can create a brand new Windows PE uh, default image and then add it to the console and start to customize it from there. That's one way. I uh, kind of went through that whenever we talked about the ADK in a previous session. The other way, and frankly the easier way, is to just copy the base boot whim from the existing source path and import it. Right? We already talked about the customization options, how you can use uh, the properties in the GUI to actually modify the boot image, how you can use DISM, how you can mount the WIM, and then make customization. So let me show you how easy it is to add the boot WIM or to add a custom boot WIM. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go harvest the existing boot WIM from, uh, from the source directory. So let me go to the config manager source directory for my boot WIM. All right. And I'm just going to grab this one. So we know that this is the base boot whim, custom, uh, no custom settings at all, just plain vanilla PE. Oops, didn't mean to do that. I meant to do copy. And now what I'm going to do is just go back to the root of C. I have my package uh, source files here. And then I have a place for custom boot image. I'm just going to copy this in. Right? Easy enough. Uh, small file uh, here, just 100 and uh, 99 uh, megabytes in size. And so I'm going to take this and import it into Config Manager and then see what happens. So I'm just going to add a boot image. I'm going to tell it the path. So okay, and then boot.win. All right, and then once we know that, we can see that we've actually got the right path because it shows us the boot image. Next, uh, give it a name if we want. So I'll just leave it default, boot, and off we go. And now this wizard will take a minute to actually work. Why? Because this is not going to take the default boot whim. We are going to take the default boot whim, inject the configuration manager specific customizations into it, and then save it off in the boot.packageid.wim format. That is really, really important to understand, right? And we'll talk about why it's important to understand in an upcoming slide. But just see it here and understand that it's a really important uh, thing to understand that we, even importing a base boot whim, will add our customizations to it. It's just part of the process of importing. Right? And you notice that it's a little bit bigger. The little bit bigger is to accommodate the extra components we add. Uh, and so you see now it's uh, CAS000D5 is the name or the package ID. And off we go. And now the, uh, the wizard is finished. Okay, So now I have a custom boot image. It's really as easy as that. Uh, just harvest the plain vanilla Windows PE version. Uh, import it uh, or put it in your own source directory. Import it and we're good. Right.
So that's the way I prefer to do it. Uh, why go to the pain and labor of doing it a different way if I don't have to? So I'm going to get rid of that because I don't care to keep it around. All right, cool. So winding down here, right? So uh, working with down-level boot images. So first of all, what are down-level boot images? So in Config Manager, in the different versions of Config Manager, we have taken dependencies on different versions of the ADK. So in each version of the ADK, there will be a version of PE specific to that version of the ADK. So in Config Manager 2012 R2, Win PE 5 is the current flavor. In the ADK that went along with Config Manager RTM, then we had Windows PE 3. And then we put SP1 in, we had Windows PE 4, right? As we move forward in ADK version, as we move forward in Windows PE version, there are certain sets of operating systems that we support and certain sets of operating systems that we don't, right? So, for example, in Windows PE 5, which is the one that we have in Config Manager 2012 R2, we only support Windows 7 forward, as I recall. I have to go look at the matrix to be sure, but we only support Windows 7 forward, imaging Windows 7 forward. We can, uh, there's a couple of tangents and, and twist off of that, but the point is uh, Windows 7 forward is our base. So you can't use PE5 to image Windows XP or Server 2003. Hopefully nobody's doing that anyway now. But if you had a need to, you couldn't. You also can't do uh, imaging of Windows Server 2008 with PE5, right? Some people uh, might still have a need to put out Windows Server 2008 for whatever reason. <clears throat> so if you need to support imaging of a version of Windows that we don't support in the current boot image, then you have no choice. You have to use a down-level boot image. So the strategy with that usually is that uh, in one example you know, that I, I know of, you know, a customer needed to deploy XP still. So they needed Windows PE 3 to be able to do that. That, again, is the version that comes along with Config Manager 2012 RTM. So to interact with, to customize that boot whim, they had to maintain uh, a virtual machine, in their case, with Config Manager 2012 RTM on it. The sole purpose of that was to have the GUI access and so on to be able to modify PE3, to be able to set the options like a command prompt and so on. So if you have a down-level version of PE that you import, you can certainly do that. If you have a boot whim that is PE4, PE3, something down-level from where you are right now, you can import that, no problem. All you have to do is... Uh, what I just did, uh, import or add boot image, we will add it. The challenge is because it's down level, you will not see the customization options. You won't have the ability to customize here. You won't have the ability to customize here, right? So if you need that ability to customize at that level, you have. that's why you have to maintain a config manager infrastructure that matches that version of PE. Or you have to do the customizations manually. Right. Either way, uh, you have to do special management of that down-level boot whim. Now, when it comes time to import that down-level boot whim using the right-click add boot image, right, we will import that boot whim, and just like you saw a minute ago, we will open up that boot whim and we will add the config manager specific components to that boot whim, even though it's down-level, and then we will close it up. So at the import level, we will inject the config manager pieces into it. It's just once the boot whim is loaded, you can't modify it further from that point, uh, at least through the UI. I right? hope that makes sense. Okay. So in rare cases, you might, uh, you might need to uh, uh, support down-level boot images, hopefully not anymore now, right? and, and so on. All right, so that said, let's, let's wrap this thing up. The last thing I want to mention here uh, are some of the key changes, actually the single key change in R2 for boot images. So you saw how, and as I import a boot image, we'll go in and inject specific Config Manager components into that boot whim, and then it's good to go for using in Config Manager. 
we made a change in Config Manager 2012 R2. And that specific change was that we renamed the variable for the network access account. All right? Not a big deal as long as you're using R2. Boot images and such, it's all there for you uh, without problem. But what if you have some of the custom boot images that were imported from a previous environment? Maybe you have a Windows PE 3 boot image that you've imported into your environment and you need to still be able to use. If that's the case, that PE 3.0 WIM is built using uh, RTM code. And so whenever we prepared that boot WIM, we injected the RTM environment into it. That RTM environment uses the old network access account variable name. And once you try to use that now in R2, it will fail because R2 expects the updated network access account variable name. It's really easy to fix this. So really just re-importing the boot whim will fix it because at that import, as you've seen, we'll open up that boot whim, inject the new R2 environment into it, and close it back up. And that action alone will update the variable names so that it then will work with the Config Manager 2012 R2 environment. All right. All right, good enough. So that's the tour of boot images. We can certainly talk about it a little bit more, but hopefully that gives a good flavor of it. We'll wrap this session for now, and we will catch you in session 18.